Tervet tuloa Disobey. Welcome to Disobey. My name is Donnie Warner. I'm a former black hat security researcher in the past. I've been in several documentaries. Currently a security consultant. It's an American muscle car burning out. I had one exactly like this as my first car when I was 16 years old. And I didn't know much about cars then. Hardly knew anything at all. However, concurrently, I had, was in university and I studied material science. I started studying mechanical engineering. I studied metallurgy. And I began to understand what things were made of in a very intimate way. You learn what, how iron is put together, the difference between brittle iron and soft iron. You learn that when you design something that you have to make it a certain thickness to support a certain weight, so on and so forth. I got to the point where I could literally take apart the whole car and put it back together without any issue after about a year. Not only that, but I also learned the theory behind the things in the car, how an internal combustion works how the rear end works, how the gears work, how the transmission works. Started to learn everything about this car. And as I said, I can take apart the car. It would apply to another car even. This was before the electronic age, of course, so there wasn't all these little computers and stuff, so on and so forth. And how does this talk about cars relate to computers? Well. You see up on the screen, there's several different manufacturers by their logos that I have there. And I think some of them will jump out right away as to what might be more reliable or secure, in your opinion. And it especially does for me. Um, as an American, strangely, we learned that Volvos, for some reason, were very, very safe. Why? Because we saw commercials of these Volvos being rolled over a cliff getting all smashed up and driving off. And it was just interesting that certain things, why was that more secure? Why was that more safe? So I'm considering that safety and reliability example for the automobiles is the same as security. It's, it's an interesting dynamic that I saw in my mind. And the interesting thing that comes out of this is when I start thinking about my experience in developing is that what you don't know, what you think you might know is actually going to kill somebody. Now, who here is the developers that are not particularly in the security industry at all? By raise your hands, who's, who's developers here? So about 80%, maybe 90. If you're a security professional, you can go drink beer or whatever. This talk's really not for you. And I want to use a few examples. We're going to talk about cars again. And the interesting thing was the Ford Pinto. It was a new car back in the 70s. Yeah. What's it say there? It says, fuel tank problems led to combustion during rear end collisions. What? 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 what, what? But yeah, when, it, when, when this happened, that happened. This car made it into production. It was a very, very successful car, as a matter of fact. It kept blowing up. Why did it blow up? In my opinion, anyway, somebody wasn't doing their job. Somebody was failing in understanding how things work properly for the job that they should be doing. Creating a vehicle that's safe and reliable. Everybody knows what the Titanic is. It's a big boat, right? And it's known that it crashed into an iceberg, side ripped open, and it sank. Had double compartments, all of this, okay, well, great. But that's not really the cause of why it ultimately failed when it hit the iceberg. There was many contributing factors. 
One of them, of course, was the metallurgy, as I spoke about earlier, how the metal of the, 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 the sides of the thing was designed. It was determined that it was more of a brittle type of metal, and when exposed to the cold, it was even more brittle. However, that probably wouldn't have caused the complete failure of the Titanic. But after a long analysis, all right, Ketos Palion. But as it says here, not only was the fabrication done by inexperienced, and inexperienced tradesmen, people who were actually building the boat, but the rivets that held the side of the boat together were already at their limit of design strength. Not only was the material insufficient for the application being involved, but the actual size of the rivet itself as well was out of specification. And as it said, it was they were already loaded near their ultimate strength. Now, when I was in university, it was really nice. We had big fat books that had equations in them. And if something weighed a certain amount and you had this diameter of rivet to hold two pieces together, that there's a formula to figure out how big that is. Somebody wasn't doing their job. Or maybe they were faking it. Maybe they thought they knew. Maybe they made assumptions on this, this should be big enough, okay? But ultimately, somebody wasn't doing their job. Excuse me, it's, it's quite warm in here. Now, I test a lot of stuff. I break into systems as my career. It's what I do. I break into computers. I test them for their security. And you would think somebody designing the fucking Titanic would get it right about a damn rivet that's basically integral to the whole structure of the ship. But we don't know if that person was faking it or not. How does this relate to computer things? Well, I find a lot of flaws. And sometimes I wonder, how in the fuck did this happen? This is a perfect example that somebody had an authentication mechanism that I had to test. Excuse me. It was a Java application. So it was a little box that comes up, username, password. So the first thing I did was try admin admin. Login password incorrect. So this is already a clue. Can anybody tell me what the issue is here? The username is correct. Exactly. So we know we got a right username, maybe. We don't know for sure, but OK. So what do we do next? We try login with foo, foo, because this is quite silly. And what happens? Again, says. Login user ID not found. So now we know we have user enumeration. We know it. Great. And I thought, how is this little Java applet communicating with the rest of the user interface here? How, do, how is the authentication mechanism actually working? So I use Wireshark. And you can see the client request, which is what I'm typing into the box. And you can see the server response. And you can see right where up on the top, you see uh, select star from user table where username is admin. Okay, this is like a SQL statement. However, if you look at the blue at the bottom, it says admin, admin zero. So guess what my next try was? Admin, ad, admin, admin zero. And I was in. <laughs> and this is bad enough, but I tried to figure out why. How in the fuck did this happen? This was a mature product, very big company. 
how in the hell does this happen? Now, for all of you developers, I am not a developer. I can hardly write hello world in C or Python. I can do it basic. Um, I, do, I do work with code quite a bit, but I'm really not a designer. I can't really create stuff all the time. But, so how, what, 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 what happened? OK, I'm going to take one scenario that I think might have happened is that the guy wasn't finished yet. Wasn't finished yet. But a boss, he had to show his boss that, you know, you could log into this thing. And he was like, maybe I'll fix it later. Or he was faking it. Maybe he had been tasked with a job that he really just didn't get. I'm sure that he has good skills. Maybe he probably wouldn't have been hired in the first place. And I ultimately don't know. But I've had experience with developers in large corporations. And sometimes those developers go from one unit to another unit, one task to a different task. And sometimes when you're at that first task, you are, you're there, you're in the zone. You can't do nothing wrong. Boom, 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 boom. But in other circumstances, you're like, what the fuck am I doing? It's like, I, I kind of know what I'm doing, but OK, so I kind of write this thing. You know, my co does this look OK? Yeah, it, wor it works, yeah, OK. So you're kind of getting by, yeah? What happens when you go to specify that rivet for the Titanic? You, what happens when that guy is designing the fuel system and placement in the Ford Pinto? He may have designed the instrument cluster perfectly. Who knows? I don't, I, ultimately, I don't know. But I had to put myself in this headspace to try to understand what the fuck is wrong here. Faking it. You have to understand for yourself what you're capable of and understand how to work with what you're strong with. I've been faced with this myself. I was in a unit that stopped doing what I do. They wanted me to do other stuff. I didn't like it. I couldn't do it. I got frustrated. I got mad. I got angry because stupid fucks were writing this shit. No one was telling them to fix it. Volvo, back to cars again. This is an advertisement that would run, I believe, in an American magazine, car magazines. And what's it show? The fucking car smashing into a wall. Now, in car safety, the number one thing, especially that Volvo figured out, was that if you can protect that front door and where that window goes down, called the A-pillar, that the chances of the occupant surviving that accident greatly increased. In today's world, all vehicles are designed with this type of standard. How much can this A pillar move to be certified? Well, reasonable assumption that Volvo's doing a pretty good job. Do I, I get in a Volvo in a heartbeat. Well, I'm probably getting an Alfa Romeo too. <laughs> but yeah, I think you're starting to understand here what's going on. Had that guy been, had testing properly or, or, or been within his realm, he wouldn't have made those mistakes with the authentication mechanism, in my opinion, because I still don't know what happened. And Volvo, you have to prove it. Not only did we design it at this angle, with this thickness of material and this supports, can that happen? If we don't follow this rules, if we make the metal too thin, or the angle a different way, it's not going to pass this test. And I imagine that all of the engineers there were doing a pretty fucking competent job. Because if they didn't, what would happen? They'd someone would get killed. Four pinos. <laughs> kind of ignorant. 
Stuff I find on a regular basis. Stuff people like me find on a regular basis. Admin, admin. Admin password, administrator password. Root, root. Root with no password. I like those. Or some other flaw. Yesterday I, 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 I spoke about zero day vulnerabilities. How those happen? Well, I can understand some of them. Not everybody knows everything. We're still finding flaws in code that's been thoroughly vetted for years and years, and we're still finding flaws. You know how hard it is to get JBoss to run his root? You have to purposely go out of your way to get JBoss to run his root. Why would you ever want JBoss running his root? Because you fucked up writing your application and it can only run as root. Because let me tell you, you can certainly build applications that run on JBoss that don't need root to do anything you want it to do. So if you've got some JBoss running as root, you done fucked up. <laughs> Other things, simple things, simple hardening. Find X servers running, really? You got a website. Why are you running a web oh, X server? Why is VNC running? Why do you have Telnet running? All you're doing is serving a web page. You're serving APIs. You don't need that. Oh, you know, administration. No, you don't. You do that on the back end. Somebody's fucking up. Somebody's not realizing maybe I shouldn't do this. Oh, I got a good job. I get good money. I do this a lot. It's weird. I do tell a lot of product testing with people, different companies, different types of products, from vehicles, telco, all kinds of stuff like that. And, and you know, I, 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 I was at a vendor, and I decided that I'm not going to just deliver them a report. I'm actually going to do a workshop based on my findings. Happened to be in China. And I showed them the flaws that I found. Some kind of like what we saw, not specifically. And I looked at them, and Facebook, Gmail, Twitter, these are really Western, so I used their Chinese equivalents. But I basically looked at the room, and I said, do you think you would have still have these flaws if you were working for Baidu or WeChat? The look on their face said everything. They were like, no, they wouldn't. Now, you developers, think about your code right now, right this minute. Would that code be good enough to work for Twitter, Google? You feel that secure in your abilities? Well, I tell you what, shit like running JBoss's root should not happen. This is 2018. Now, if this was 1992, I might understand. Or if it was the year 2000, even 2005, for that matter. It's 2018. There's almost nothing that hasn't been done before in computing. Everything that you do now has been done before. It may be put together in a little bit different way, but I don't see any miracle new coding techniques coming around lately. There's no magical fucking shit going on that you shouldn't know. Now, I wanted to use an example other than what I've used. I wanted to call it like, an alcoholic. You can't get yourself help until you realize you have a problem. No, you're an alcoholic. <clears throat> Can we always trust the user? Oh, but Mr. Hacker, our application sits five layers deep inside of a protected network that's never connected to the internet. I don't give a fuck. You never heard of an insider attack? You never heard of, you, where does your application be run? In, in, in some country that has cheap labor and they're just punching some buttons? Don't think so. You can't always trust the user. I don't care what your security posture is. You don't trust the user ever. 
is my code proper and secure? Well, if you're writing a fucking authentication mechanism in Java, you better well make sure it is. And if you don't, go look it up. It's been done before. Ask yourself, you know, do, 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 do I understand what I'm doing here? This is what I'm getting to earlier about faking it. Another good example, a uh, uh, past job I had, a great security consultant. He was really good at testing, did protocol testing. Boom, boom, boom. He'd write a test specification. He'd give him the, st the new stack. Boom, boom, boom. He'd test it. He'd find all the buffer overflows, everything great. Put him in another unit to handle web security. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. He, he came to me and he says, well, what, do, what, what, what do I do? I said, well, how about viewing the page source? Hey, okay. Comes back five minutes later and says, what do I do next? Are you fucking kidding me? Did, did you try to go to one of the, the directories that's in, that's in there? You know what a directory is? You know how they make a web page different? Maybe, even the images folder, maybe it has directory listings enabled. Who knows? He's like, oh, oh yeah, okay. Third time he came back to me, I just went, really? I, do you even know what the fuck you're doing? But yet, he was excellent at this regimented testing. I couldn't do it. I didn't know enough about the, the TCP stacks that we were, we were working with. Because I'm a hacker. I break into shit. So maybe, it, not maybe, it would have been wonderful if he could have said, not only to himself, but his supervisor. And say, you know, I'm not comfortable with this. I, I'm not getting it. But he faked it. He faked it for a year and a half. And when I went to go test the project, the state of security was actually in a worse state of security after a year and a half than in the beginning. Why? Because he didn't fix or alert to any of the problems early on in the project so that they wouldn't compound themselves later. As far as I know, that project never went to market. You got a development team of 20 people working for a year and a half and they got shit security and you can't fix it because the flaws are now intrinsic into the underlying layer. So what can you do? Huh? You, Mr. L, I'm great, Mr. Hacker Guy. Well, what, can, you know, what can you do? You can do a lot of stuff. First, understand yourself. Yeah? Understand what your strengths and weaknesses are as developers. Get, realize your knowledge gaps. No, I don't know that. In, in, the biggest fear that I have isn't what I find, it's what I didn't find. What didn't I find when I'm testing? Because if I didn't find it, maybe someone else will. It might be a hacker, it might be another security audit. And what, oh, Donnie Warner, he's shit, he didn't find this. Fuck me. That's what I worry about. Am I, was I, am I faking it? I used to come home from foreign engagements and look in the mirror and go, really, this is what you do? You break into shit? But one day, I looked in that mirror and I went, yeah. It's exactly what you do. You break into shit and you consult multi-million dollar companies on their security and they listen to you and they take your advice. And now the world is more secure because of that input. That's a very, very proud thing for me to have inside. I started this game, I, I, I'm, not young. I'm not young. I didn't start this game early. I had to learn all this shit. Realize your knowledge gaps. <laughs> well, you can use Pornhub if you want, but I don't know if that's gonna help you code any better. Google probably works a lot, a lot better with that, you know? But really, I mean, ask questions. Look it up in Google or whatever. I mean, there's forums and everything. As I said earlier, this shit's been done before. You're not the first one. And that's okay. 
I'm not telling you to stop being a developer. I want you to be a better developer. Inquire to your manager about some training opportunities, workshops, go read some books. Going back to my early schooling when I was in university, I was very, very, very embarrassed one day. And when I had to calculate the, the angle of a wire from one tower of a thing to another tower of a thing. I don't know what's the maximum strength, what angle you need to be using and everything. And there was a formula for it from a big book, engineering book. Anyway, there was a formula. And I sat there at my desk and I went, fuck, I don't understand this. Why? Because I failed algebra in high school. Because it was always like X plus Y times four, fuck that. What the fuck is X? I didn't understand it, I didn't get it. But after sitting there for about 30 minutes, I said, well, I walked up to the instructor. And I said, I don't understand this. And he looked at me, he goes, it's basic algebra. He goes, really, you don't? No, I go, uh-uh. He goes, well, take, he goes, how about this? He says, what if X is the length and Y is the angle? He goes, can you do it now? I went, yeah. Because the length was six and the angle is 42. So now I can complete the formula. I don't need no fucking X and Ys. Had they shown that to me in high school, I might have got it. But I didn't, and, but that was a big breakthrough for me. I mean, huge. The whole fucking world opened up in the engineering realm, that type of thing. Completely opened up for me, allowed me to do, rebuild my car. I tore apart the transmission and rear end. It was the very first time I saw them and put them back together when I was 16 years old. Now, I'm not saying I'm some God's gift to, to, to the automobile repair or anything like that. But, I mean, this is, the, this is the mindset that I want you to grab hold of, is understanding those flaws that are within yourself that you might be hiding, even, like I was about the algebra. The one thing I didn't do was fake it. Now, could you imagine me faking a penetration test against some, maybe, you know, connected vehicle or IOT system, and they're selling a million units of those. But, yeah. Homeboy that did test one, two, three. So I, I don't know how shit happens. Do, your re do, do some research if you need. Whatever you need to do, do it. You can, whatever your product is, fucking Google it. Use a keyword like vulnerability, right? I mean, I, I, I mean, this is pretty smart. When I find a flaw, I need to make sure that it has been found, it's known, or it's not. And if it's not known, then whoa day. We got zero day, we got new exploits and shit. But if I don't do that diligent research and I release some paper that says, you got a vulnerability here, blah, 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 someone's going, no, no, you don't. Or it's, it was, yeah, that was the close, this close last year. I've actually missed no days by a day. Someone actually disclosed the same findings same day. Very, very interesting. <laughs> Any existing exploits available there, for example. I guess the reason I get a little bit angry is that because I don't know how to code well, I don't know how to develop, or I'm not a fucking architect, that I go that I should not be able to have the success that I'm having. Yet, I seem to have a lot of success in what I do. And I, I'm not bragging, please don't. I'm not modest in any way, but uh, I, you know, I, I'm really not bragging. I have tremendous success in what I do. And when I'm not working, I have tremendous success in finding zero-day vulnerabilities. And I don't go looking for them, ladies and gentlemen. It usually happens by mistake. Or I see a URL string or some other thing in, in something that just doesn't quite look right, and I try to manipulate that. And then I find a vulnerability, and I'm like, how, how in the fuck did they miss this? J-Boss! 
how to, sec how to securely deploy JBoss, how to securely deploy my product, my third-party product that I'm leveraging as a development or component, whatever that is. Do these things. If you work at J, I don't, uh, J Boss is just an example. I'm not knocking on it, but it's a great example because it's used a lot, especially in you know with a lot of the APIs that are using it as a proxy, all, all, all kinds of things. I'm just using it as an example. So number one, I would like to thank everybody here. It looks like I already got a beer. I want to thank everybody for coming and listening to me. I want to thank everybody for coming to disobey. I have the privilege of speaking in front of my son today and some very, very dear friends that flew all the way from America just to come to disobey. And I want to thank them as well. So that's my presentation. We do have a little bit of time. If anybody does have any questions or wants to engage, we can do that. And I'd like to do that in an open forum if anybody has any questions. If not, I'm going to drink beer. And I, but uh, I can drink beer and answer questions too. Any questions? Can I go drink beer? Typical Finnish audience. Wait, I want to ask a question, but I'm, no, I can't. All right. Thank you very much, everybody.